Hey guys, welcome back to Teth and Props. Today I'm going to show you how I went about making Samwise Gamgee's salt box from the Lord of the Rings. He takes this with him on his trip to Mordor to destroy the ring with Frodo, and it's just a nice little detail that's included in the films. So I thought I would make it, and it's turned out really well. So there's actually some salt in there that you can use for cooking. Yeah, so this was a little bit different to my normal builds. Zero 3D printing on this, it's all just woodwork. Really happy with how it's turned out. It's good to do a bit of woodworking every now and then. So, let's get to how I made it. I'm gonna be using wood. I've got a couple of different thicknesses of pine here. I've got some hinges, some screws, as well as this little clip thing that I found in my toolbox. I thought it will do quite nicely for what I'm gonna use it for. Let's get started. First thing I'm gonna start with is making the actual square of the box. So, it's a rectangle box, but the way that it's set up, it looks like that we need four equal lengths of pine and then just the way we stack them they'll end up being in a rectangle shape so i had a look online for some measurements really couldn't find any but just look, looking at some reference images and trying to eyeball it i think it's around six to six and a half centimeters can't decide i reckon i'm gonna go six and a half centimeters six centimeters six centimeters six and a half might be a bit too big so what i'm gonna do is just mark out and I'm gonna cut this, mark out the next one, cut it, mark out the next one. Um, I'm gonna do that because if you mark out all your points now, by the time you get to the last one, it's probably not gonna be the same length as the other one. So let's get to it. All right, we've got our four pieces done. All pretty much exactly the same size. So what I'm gonna do is just now Clean up the edges with a little bit of sandpaper. I don't want to use too much because I don't want to round the edges quite yet. Just clean them up a little bit. The next thing I need to do is just glue all this together. So I'm going to use PVA glue, wood glue, uh, chuck rubber bands around it and just let it dry for a little bit. So by roughing up the edges that little bit, it allows the glue to get in there and grip better. I've decided while looking at reference images that I really think this is a bit too thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off a little bit around the outside of the whole thing. So I think that'll be a better size once I cut it down to that on those outer lines. Um, to do that, I'm gonna wait until this is dry and just take it to the belt sander and just simply grind down each edge. That'll be the easiest. So what I've done is I've cut out four smaller pieces. What I'm aiming for is for them to have the same inner dimensions as the box. Alright, so a little bit of a change since you last saw this. Um, pretty much all I've done is just taken it outside to the sander, sanded down each of the sides, the same with the lid, and then I rounded the edges a little bit there. So maybe I'm just going to mark up now where the hinge needs to go. Alright, so we've got this hinge here. Let's open it up. So these hinges, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them right on the edge there. So I'm just going to mark out where I need to chisel out a little bit and where the holes are going to go. So because this is pine, the knife works perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not very hard wood, so when you're cutting off a little bit, little slithers like this, that's just fine. Now I'm going to just drill some pilot holes for where the little nails are going to go in. So just, I've marked out where all the holes are. Just 
go ahead and drill them. We should be able to put the hinges on now and they should nail straight in there. Oh, that screw, that uh, drill bit might have been a little bit big, but how about we do a test fit and then we can just glue all these in. Alright, so it closes, pretty much well lined up. I can just go back and smooth that down a little bit more, but yeah, there we go. Alright, so that is ready to go in there. What we're gonna do, a little bit of PVA glue around the whole thing, and then just gonna slide it in. Time to start working on this insert that goes in here. So, what I'm gonna do is cut out a section of this and make it so it friction fits into the top there. It'll inlay a little bit, but this is where I'll do the detail. The, I don't know what it is on top. I think it's a leaf on top and yeah, have to engrave that in, but that'll look really cool when it's finished. So, that is 5.9, but we'll just do it to six because we can always cut it down. Just needs a tiny bit off on this corner here. All right, that friction fits in there quite well, but once I finish this, we'll actually glue it in there so it's not gonna just be friction fit in there. Cool, so time to start drawing the design. Got the design up on my iPad there. I'm just gonna go ahead and start drawing it out. Got my design drawn there. Now, everything on the outside all around here has to be engraved in and the details in the lot, the details on the inside of the leaf also have to go down. I think I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to cut it out. It's probably the best way. So now I'm going to go over just the background a little bit with sandpaper just to clean it up but I want that kind of chiseled out look so yeah I think that'll look really good when that's attached in there. Look great. It's all finished, time to glue it in. So a bit of PVA glue around the outside as usual and then I'm just gonna put it in place. It friction fits in quite nicely, so I'll probably just leave it there. And the PVA will set up, and it will be exactly where it needs to be. There we go. The last bit of woodwork that I need to do on this is there's actually a lip that goes on the inside here. Um, it reduces the, uh, the amount of salt that it can hold quite a lot, but it means that you can get a tight seal on so that there's no, no salt coming out. So what I need to do is cut out four rectangles and it's essentially the same shape as this, just a smaller version that slots in there. Might take a little bit to uh, get it to fit snugly, but let's start measuring and cutting. I have my four pieces ready to go. They all slot in there. Friction fit in so I can push those in pretty much the whole way. Uh, to glue these in, you guessed it, bit of PVA on each corner, each space, 
and it friction fits in so nicely that you know I'm, I'm not gonna have to uh, really worry about these bits moving might just move that down one last little bit and should be good to go gonna let that sit here and dry so at the moment it doesn't close that's because we're gonna need to round off all these edges a little bit so that it can slide in properly but for now let's just let that sit I think it's been drying long enough it is now time to try and knock down this edge and this edge you don't have to worry about the sides because looking at it closely they should fit in nicely yeah, we just need to take a fair bit off the back and just a little bit off the front, enough for it so it can kind of like get over that lip and then when you close it, it kind of tightens it up a little bit. The last thing I need to make is the little hook that comes down and locks it in place. This nail should slide in quite easily because I'll end up gluing that in place and these screws, they should screw in, screw in with no issue not going to split the wood or anything like that like I could probably put that in by hand but I'm gonna to need to cut them down or find smaller ones bend this and kind of just work with the shape to get this correct Because I want everything to be gold, I'm gonna go over the screw and this little clip with my gold permanent marker. It'll probably rub, rub off eventually, but I think it will really add, really add to the colors now. Now I've got the latch on, it's time to start painting this and weathering it. Um, the top is, a, it's a very, it's a weird colored green. It's kind of pale, but green, but gray as well. So I'm just gonna try and make up a color combination using green, black, and gray. See what I can come up with, and then I'll brush it in and just rub off it on the rub it off on the top because where the top of the leaf is it's kind of it looks like it's worn away so it's a bit yeah it's a bit a bit more faded than the rest of it so we'll just try and make a color combination and see what we can do with it all right so i think that i'm happy with that color there um it's going to be a little bit diluted down once we put the um the varnish on after but for now what we'll do is we'll just put it in I'm making sure not to get it around the outside border, just like, just like I did just then. And if I do, quickly rub it away before it dries. It's good, we'll leave that to dry, then we'll start varnishing the whole thing, and yeah, we'll go from there. Time to put some varnish on it. I have this really old varnish, which I really shouldn't have been able to open with my hand just then, but I can, hopefully, the top layer is dry, but hopefully there's some, yeah, great. There's some varnish underneath that we can actually use. So, just really simply, we're just gonna get some, and some towel, 
and just rub it on. I'm gonna put this box outside, let the varnish dry. Yeah. Then we might do a little bit more weathering on it just to make it a bit darker, but that's looking pretty good right now. All the varnish is dried up and it's looking great. I think the last thing I need to do for this is to weather a little bit more and I'm gonna do that with good old fashioned dirt. So when you've got some dirt from outside, you know what I'm gonna do is literally just Rub it on in places. Sam's salt box is looking pretty much 100% complete. Although, I can't put my finger on it, but I think it's missing something. Hmm. What could it be? salt that's what it's missing so i've got some natural rock salt here that will work perfectly because in all the photos it's really grainy salt so if we just cut this open probably don't need to use the whole bag let's just fill it up as much as we can <laughs> it's looking good let's see if it works closing it carefully No salt coming out. Perfect. <laughs> Maybe it's probably best not to shake it around, but you get the idea. All right. There we have it. <laughs> and there we have it, guys. Samwise Gamgee's salt box from Lord of the Rings. Really, really happy with how this turned out. It's a nice little piece that I haven't seen too many people make online, so I thought I would try it myself. I love how the top of it turned out and how weathered and old it looks. So really happy with how that's turned out. I'll put that in the kitchen for use now. And yeah, thanks very much for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. All right, see you later.